Hi everyone, it's Michelle and I'm here with my August monthly planner. If you've been following me for some time, you know what the story is. If you're new, to explain real quickly, one of the things I discovered when I started journaling is I'm overwhelmed by these big thick journals that I love to make, but personally I don't like to use them. I wanted something that I could use over and over again. I liked making a single cover. So what I've done is I've created a single cover that I can create different inserts for. And then when I'm done, I put them all into a big binder. So every month I make myself a new journal. I keep them very simple. I don't want ephemera. I don't want um, journaling cards, journaling tags, all of that stuff. So what I've done this month is I have, like I always do, it's a very, very simple thing. A couple of things I will go over with you. I love these little hands. I got this from scrapbook.com a while ago. I don't know that they have them anymore. People are always asking me. Uh, I, use, I pick a paper pad that I use throughout the whole thing. So this is Prima Marketing's Tales of You and Me. It is this gorgeous, it has purple in it as well as these roses. Uh, it all matches, it all goes together. This is my July journal and it's full. We'll take a look at that in a second. But this is my August journal and I start out with just a piece of cardstock from that collection. And then I decorate it, I add my pages, things like that. One of the things I did this time was I used the back side. You can see this is much more green and use some die cuts. And if you hang out after I'm done with this little flip through, I'll show you some of my tricks to getting really good die cuts. So this is it. Um, this is my August word. I print that out on clear sticker paper, then Put that over top of something. I was in a blingy mood so I've added quite a bit of bling and then I also added these two die cuts. All of these I believe are Tim Holtz die cuts. Uh, just kind of love Tim Holtz die cuts. I love this swirl and then a butterfly and I've added bling and I don't know if you can see all of that sparkle but I really really was in a sparkly mood. The other thing I've done differently is normally I use coffee dyed copy paper. This time I use my acid neutral coffee to dye parchment paper. So this is all parchment paper. It has a very different feel. It almost feels velvety. I wish you could feel this with me. But it's, it, uh, it, it's just this gorgeous parchment paper that I did go ahead and copy dye. I used some genuine, this was a real piece of French ephemera that I had on hand. I do flips. So what I do is I leave it very blank and then I will go back in and decorate it. Sometimes I use stickers, sometimes I do fussy cutting and use those different kinds of things. This is an old 19, well this one's 1921, but some of these date back as early as 1915. It's a ledger that I got from Susie over at Paper Harbor Co. Love her stuff. I went on a uh, journal uh, ledger binge and bought a whole bunch of ledgers from her one weekend. It was crazy. This is a great book. I love this page. I wanted to add a little bit of color, but not too much. This is the field guide to wildflowers, and that's what I did all of my fussy cutting from. I'll show you my gorgeous pile in a moment. So a lot of it's blank. I add about four pages for interest, giving me about 32 pages that I can write on. So tracing paper, love that sound. Another flip. In the center, I've tied a big bow. I may go back and tie some beads onto this or do something like that, we'll see. But I do a lot of my decorating as I go. So tracing paper again, um, I have that book page, I have this ledger page, and I do have this. Then I have another flip at the back. So that's my fresh one, but let's take a look real quickly through my July one and I'll give you a, a, a quick flip through a bit. 
in my class, so I offer a class if you would ever like to learn how to make a reusable book cover, um, to make your own monthly journals and your own binder, I'll link that below. I do have a class. It's only 35 bucks. It's not real expensive and I sell it over on Etsy. This, uh, I used, these are all stickers from Planning Janny. And you'll see that as I go along, first of all, I love, I have a date stamp I use a lot, but you can see that I've done a lot of decorating. I've added things. I loved that she had all of these quotes for this month. Um, so on the insides of my flips, I'll do some decorating. Looks like my glue is letting loose for some of these things. Uh, but I'll do some stamping around it, different things. So I decorate each page as I go. I am not particularly fond of doing it all at once in the beginning. I kind of go by what my mood is every time. And then I glue and I use, I print a lot of stuff out on sticker paper. So it is time. It is the end of August, or the end of July. It is, tomorrow is August 1st, or when you're watching this, today is August 1st. And I simply tie the next one in, and I am ready to go for the next month. And I've done fussy cutting, so I will probably do fussy cuts in my journal this time instead. So I'm all ready now for the month of August. And if you'll hang in there with me, I will show you next how I did the die cuts on the cover of this and why you need the magnetic platform. So I'm here to do a little share using my Sizzix Big Shot. Uh, I know that a lot of people, there's a couple of different kinds of things that you can use. This does embossing and does die cuts. I really love this because Tim Holtz makes a lot of die cuts for this. But I'm here decorating my journal cover. And I've gotten it this far and I decided I wanted some die cuts out of part of the complementary papers that go with this. This is literally just the other side of the paper I used for this piece. I decided I wanted to add a couple of little decorative pieces. Now to do this today, one of the things I'm using is my magnetic platform. See, magnetic platform. I did not have one of these for the longest time. I was literally just being way too cheap about it. Then I finally decided I would break down and buy it. Now when you're using your magnetic platform, you need two of these. You can see mine are very well loved. I actually have multiple sets uh, and I kind of play with them. And I know a lot of you are like myself. You just use these puppies until they are pretty dead. Um, so I'm going to grab a couple of different die cuts out of here and we're just going to run them through the die cut machine. What I love though about this magnetic piece is that it really holds the, the die cuts in place. So if you follow along on this, it has what you need to do, your magnetized area, your paper, your ring, and then your top plate. So you need all of those things. I am going to, I think, let's see how many of these we can get on one piece. So we put this down and then we put our piece on top of it. Now one of the things you'll see is, I don't know if you can see, but my, this is warped. If I try to lay it on here, it's probably not going to work. So you need one that's fairly flat. If yours are warping, make sure it's fairly flat. We're going to put that down. Then we are going to put this piece down. I am going to, I think, use that. Now see, I've got, it's magnetic. That is not going to fall off, but I like kind of the look in through here. Then I want one of these. 
And I think I'm going to go with the smallest one, which looks like it's this one. And I'm going to just put that down. Now, here's the thing. Make sure you are putting, uh, make sure you're putting the cutting side. So if you look at these, there's a part that's raised. That is the side that will do the cutting. You want to make sure you're putting that cutting side down. Uh, otherwise, it won't work. You, you just, you won't get anything. Last but not least, I would love to include a butterfly on this. Um, let us grab a butterfly. Uh, one of the things that's really cool about this set is this has the ones where you literally cut out the whole butterfly or you can cut out all the little tiny pieces and you get the little piece. Today I am going to use a whole butterfly. I'm not sure it really matters. We're going to just do a butterfly this way. And then, so I've used three different actual pieces here, but I was able to fit them all on one platform. And, and so we are going to put the top on this, run this through our handy dandy big shot. And if you're familiar with these, they do crack a lot. They make that sound. I like to run mine through one way and then all the way back through just to kind of make sure that everything goes well. And there we have it. We have our pieces that we're going to use now on the front of this journal. Oh, it looks like I didn't quite cut through this, and that's probably okay. I can go back, and I'm just going to cut this with my scissors. So that's how I got the die cuts for my cover, but also why I highly recommend the magnetic platform, because I would not have done this as well if I didn't have that magnetic platform. So I hope you've enjoyed this little tip, and I hope I've inspired you to be creative today.